We are continuing on with our NHL offseason plan series. We're now at the 25th ranked team from the NHL's 21-22 regular season, the Detroit Red Wings. What do we expect from them this offseason? What kind of business will Steve Eiserman be looking to do before next year? We'll discuss that coming up next. So welcome back to another video here at Top Shelf Hockey. As I mentioned today, we're looking at the Detroit Red Wings off-season plan series as we continue our team series through all 32 NHL teams. We will eventually make it through all the teams once the playoffs are over and all the teams get eliminated here. So we're obviously starting with all the non-playoff teams working our way up the list basically in the reverse order of the standing. So what we're going to do first is do a quick recap here of their regular season results, take a look at their cap space, where they finish, what they have on the books for contracts next year, and what kind of space they're working with. Segment three, we're going to look at their, uh, their contracts that they need to deal with. So their RFAs, UFAs, uh, and kind of go from there, what they have to look at either replacing or re-signing. And then lastly, what are the top questions and the top things that this team needs to focus on as the offseason gets fully underway here. So first up, let's recap the 21-22 season. Uh, we saw them finish with a record of 32-40-10 for 74 points. Uh, they started actually pretty good, but they ended on a really, really bad re uh, rate here. Uh, things were way better early on. There was the first month or so of the season, people were actually talking, can the Red Wings make the playoffs? And I was like, eh, I don't think so. Uh, but they were surprising. And, you know, they did kind of fizzle down and kind of came back to earth a little bit. And they ended up finishing really poorly due to a number of factors, including schedule and uh, obviously, uh, you know, injuries. And everything played a role here as well. They ended up scoring 227 goals, which was 25th best in the NHL, while giving up 310, which is terrible. That's 31st in the NHL. Only one team was worse. Special teams were not very good either with a power play of 16.3%, which was the 26th best in the league. And PK was the absolute worst in the NHL, 32nd, 73.8% success rate, which is really not good at all. Ideally, you want that around 80% or better. Of course, once the season came to an end as well, Steve Eisman did announce that head coach Jeff Blaschel would not return. So we know that obviously that's something that they're going to be dealing with this offseason, which we'll discuss a little bit later here in the video now let's take a look at their cap space uh in the 21 22 season at the end of the year they finished in a pretty good spot they had 11.237 million dollars available and going into this full off season here in 22 23 they have 14 contracts on the books for next year that only adds up to 45.978 million dollars which gives them about 36 and a half million dollars in available salary cap space. But of course, with 14 contracts, that means they're looking at, you know, somewhere around eight or nine players to either uh, re-sign, replace in some capacity here. So that money could add up, you know, fair bit, but they should be a pretty good result, uh, pretty good flexibility here to kind of make some moves and uh, to not be too tight here like a lot of the other teams around the NHL. Now looking at their expiring contracts, the, under the RFA list, they have some young players that are coming out of their entry-level deals, like Philip Zadina, their former first-round pick from a few years back, who hasn't quite materialized to be the full-time NHL regular impact player. At least they were hoping they were getting back when he was drafted, but his entry-level deal is expired. Uh, we also have Mitchell Stevens, uh, Ola Ulevi, and Jake Wallman, who they recently acquired here from the St. Louis Blues in that Nick Letty trade. Uh, so certainly uh, Wallman is definitely a player. I would imagine Stevens gets qualified. I think Ola Ulevi is a question mark. I'm not sure how they feel about him. Uh, he hasn't really panned out so far in the NHL on his third team now after moving on from Vancouver after being drafted quite some time ago. On the UFA side of things, they have some veteran players like Carter Rowney, Sam Gagne, uh, a couple defensemen, and Denny DeKaiser and Mark Stahl, and a couple goalies in Thomas Grice and Magnus Helberg. Now, Helberg only came over late in the year and only got to play one game. 29 years old from Europe, so I'm not really sure how that is going to work out, if they have intention of bringing him back or what the future holds for him. I would think Thomas Grice probably moves on, or if he's going to continue playing, that is. I don't know what the future holds for him, but I don't see him being a Red Wing next year. Um, and obviously, Mark Stahl, Danny DeKaiser. DeKaiser, I can probably safely say, won't be back. Stahl, I wouldn't be completely shocked if they signed him to another cheap one-year contract to be a veteran guy there. That's, uh, you know, same with Sam Gagne. I, I can't say for sure they're going to do it, but based on, you know, history here, I, I wouldn't be shocked if it indeed did happen. Now, 
What are the top burning questions facing the Detroit Red Wings as they go with full-scale offseason and get down to business here with Steve Eiserman and company getting ready for the 22-23 season? Well, top question, as I mentioned, who's your head coach? We know Jeff Blaschel will not return. Of course, Steve Eiserman inherited him. Of course, he was originally hired by Ken Holland. Um, he worked under Eiserman the past few years, and uh, Eiserman feels it's time to move on. So many feel like it's probably a situation where Detroit – this offseason might be looking to make a few moves and take a step forward and that they wanted a different kind of coach behind the bench. Now, who those you know candidates are going to be, we don't really know yet. There hasn't been a lot of talk, a lot of speculation on who it could be, but certainly you have to think that um, there's lots of names out there. I mean, I know Barry Trotz just became the top free agent coach on the market after being let go by the Islanders. I don't see him going to Detroit. Um, you know, there's rumors about Mike Babcock making a return to the NHL. I don't see him going back to Detroit either. Uh, that doesn't make sense, but there's certainly lots of NHL coaches, uh, you know, whether it be an assistant coach looking to make a move up or, or other uh, coaches moving up from the AHL, etc. So I'm not sure what direction Eisenman is going to go in, but certainly determining who that coach is is going to be a big part of the offseason. Clearly, that's going to dictate what style of play they are going to be looking to go with next year, the systems, etc., which is going to kind of help determine for Eisenman what kind of players he should be looking to bring in. Obviously, to some degree, it doesn't matter too much. Some players can fit in a lot of variety of ways, but certainly, you know, the coaching systems and style of play will play a role in some of his uh, personnel decisions for sure. So they got to figure that out, and that's pretty high on the top of the list, in my opinion. Uh, the next question they're going to be looking at is, who's your goaltending candidate going into next year? Now, fair to say that Alex Ndokovic is, for right now, their uh, starting goaltender. Now, I think... Uh, like I said, Grice probably doesn't come back. Do they consider Helberg after one game? I don't know. I mean, do they go into the market and try to bring in a more experienced goalie to be a 1A, 1B with Nadelkovic? To me, I think Nadelkovic is a really good young goaltender. Uh, he's not signed long term. So they have time here to kind of determine, um, you know, the future of the goaltending situation. I think Sebastian Kalsa, uh, who was the top you know, goalie prospect of theirs, who was a first round pick from the WHL. Um, for 2020, like he's bound to be the goalie of the future. At least he looks to be like a real solid goalie, um, but he needs time to develop. So you need another guy who can come in as like a placeholder with Ndokovic, who to me, you could run in tandem um, and kind of split the duties here for the next couple of years would be what I'd be looking to do if I'm Steve Eiserman. Now there's obviously goalies on the market via trade and free agency. Maybe they try to grab a guy like Billy Huso who might be available in St. Louis, who's a expected to hit free agency here as well. Um, that's going to be tough for the Blues to keep him. So certainly, goaltending to me, another major question that Eisenman needs to figure out here on a long-term basis, or at least for the next couple of years. Uh, also, the 2022 NHL draft is going to be a big day for the Red Wings. They have another fairly high first-round pick at number 8 overall, and they do have 10 picks total. Uh, so I do wonder uh, if they would consider trading that pick or tr trading some of their other picks, combining them together to try to get themselves another tangible asset like a player who can have an impact right away i mean it can't say for sure they would consider that because really when i look at the red wings prospect pool it's suddenly becoming a little thin and the only reason for that in my opinion is that a lot of their top guys are now in the nhl like they have mo sider they have lucas raymond uh you know already they're making an impact sedina's not really a prospect anymore he's there for a while you do have a guy like joe Valino should be a full-timer next year hopefully uh they do have simon edmondson a big strong defenseman from sweden he should make a jump into the lineup next year. You gotta wonder about Jonathan Bergeron. Could he play a player for them next year as well? So I do think that we're gonna see them add a little bit more youth, but to me, and then of course they have Kosa and Goal. So it's not like they don't have a good pool of prospects, but there's a couple of players there that to me could be impact players, uh, like Evanson and Kosa. Um, but still, like, could they benefit from another solid player, or do they need the uh, player who can have an impact now. I'm not really sure what Eisenman's view on this is because there are some that think that he's still going to be patient. We're going to see this play out here over the number of years. Or is it a case where the Red Wings want to make a jump forward faster than that and try to get an impact player or two to help insulate these young guys sooner than later? That's another possibility. You also have to wonder about the futures of Dylan Larkin and Tyler Bertuzzi. This offseason, they're eligible for contract extensions. And there's a, some that are not really sure what the belief is with Eiserman and company there in Detroit. Do they sign these players to uh, a good long-term extension and they remain in Detroit part of the team uh, core uh, to, to lead this team through the remainder of this rebuild and beyond? 
Or do they consider a trade and try to get some assets back here? Because they have to ask themselves, uh, is it worth keeping these guys around um, to lead this? Because you do need some veteran players for one. So there is that. Secondly, though, is they're, they're not old players by any means, but they're just old enough that they might be getting to the, like, you know, around that 30 years old age or so by the time that the Red Wings are able to really be more of a competitive team, um, you know, higher up in, in the playoff standings, right? So, you know, is it worth trading to get a bunch of assets now that can get more younger players even to grow up with the other guys they have been part of this young crew like Raymond Insider, etc.? I don't know. I think Larkin stays for sure. Uh, I don't think he goes anywhere. I think they signed their captain to an... Uh, a decent extension. I'm not sure how many years, but it definitely gets an extension. Uh, Bertuzzi, it's question mark. There's a lot of interest in him. Uh, I know it's a player that the Maple Leafs were after for the last couple of deadlines. I uh, don't know if they still have any interest because they're going to be going through their own changes to think about. But Bertuzzi is a, is a guy I do wonder. Um, I don't think it's a slam dunk either way. I think Eisman will definitely listen. And it really boils down to what's presented to him. We didn't think they'd trade Anthony Mantha either, but they did when they got that hockey trade for Jacob Verena. And that's worked out. Well, I mean, Vrana's done, you know, dealt with the injuries and stuff, but overall, I think it's, it was a good trade for the Red Wings in that, in that regard. And you have to wonder as well, the other big question to me is, are they going to dip into free agency or uh, the trade uh, market with some uh, some of their picks or whatever to pick up some more veteran players? Like, or are they going to bring back guys like Gagne and Stahl? Or are we going to see them do something different? Because they do have some good young players that are on the roster. They have a couple more players on the way, but they do have some holes in this team. They, there's some pieces there that they need to add to take some steps forward. And you got to wonder if they're going to be dipping into free agency or the trade market to try to make that happen. I just don't know how patient Eiserman is going to be. How long are they willing to continue, you know, be lower in the standings before they make some moves to add some good, uh, you know, younger veterans, I guess you could say, to mix in with the top young players that they have making an impact on the Red Wings now so that they have a shot at playoffs you know, maybe in a year or two instead of it being three, four, or five years down the road. So let me know your thoughts on everything discussed on a Red Wings offseason down below in the comments. What do you expect from Eisenberg to do? What are the big questions you feel are facing this franchise? And what business should they take care of first up uh, in this offseason here as they get ready for the 22-23 season? If you're new to this channel, make sure you subscribe and stick around. We'll keep you up to date with all the latest news, rumors, and analysis of all 32 NHL teams. Thank you for watching, and I'll catch you next time. Bye.